Welcome to another Tailgate Thursday sponsored by Frontier Precision. I'm Adam Bridges, the geospatial sales representative here in Idaho. Hey Mel, TSE 7 has been a great tool for a number of our customers for several years now. They like the larger screen, the faster Intel processor, and that it runs on a Windows 10 operating system. It's still just not a one-size-fits-all for people looking for a smaller form factor. What can we recommend? Yeah, that's a good question, Adam. Uh, we cover 12 states, uh, working with the USDA, the DOI, like National Park Service, BLM, BOR. These folks work in heavily canopied environment, work in canyons, and, and they needed something smaller and lighter. Um, some exciting news is Trimble Access 2020 came out, and one of the most important things about Trimble Access 2020, it's running on a TDC 600 on Android. It's first time ever for uh, Trimble uh, to have a survey application on Android. As you can see, the form factor is super light. When you pair that with a Trimble R12, you're looking at one of the lightest GNSS rovers in the industry. Let's go inside, take a look at the specifications of the TDC 600 and also some Trimble Access 2020 Android specific notes. Sounds great, Mel. Let's take a look at some key features of a Trimble TDC 600. It's running Android 8.0 with a 6-inch high-resolution sunlight readable display to keep you surveyors satisfied. Ultra-rugged to be able to handle the rigors of field use. A Qualcomm processor with 4 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of internal storage. A large capacity user-replaceable battery for those days your surveys go longer than eight hours, we've got you covered. Google Mobile Services certified with access to Google Play Store to load additional field apps or applications. 4G, LTE, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth are giving you lots of industry-renowned connectivity options and access to additional sensors. Ergonomic, lightweight, and slim form factor when paired with a Trimble R12 making it one of the lightest GNSS rovers in the industry. Front and rear facing cameras, runs Trimble, third party or custom developed field applications. And we're super excited that you'll be able to now run Trimble Access with the same industry renowned look and field that you've been accustomed to on this Trimble TDC 600. Let's take a look at some Trimble Access 2020 Android-specific notes. The development team at Trimble has done a lot of research on user interface, and they wanted to make sure that you had the same look and feel of Trimble Access on Android that you've learned to come to love and enjoy using. That means zero learning curve. The TDC 600 is the only supported device at the time of launch. The only additional module presently available on Trimble Access for Android is the Rhodes module at this time. Android versions of Trimble Access will work with all Trimble GNSS receivers and many conventional instruments, but via Bluetooth only. The TDL 2.4 radio could be Bluetooth to a TDC 600 for robotic functions. Lastly, no current support for the Trimble SX10 or Spectra Focus instruments at the present time. Hey now, that was some awesome information in there. That's going to be really helpful for our customers uh, installing Trimble Access on an Android. Really excited to see what the user interface looks like for Access 2020. Yeah, as you can see, Trimble Access running on Android on a TDC 600 with an R12, super lightweight, um, really. Um, listening to the, the surveyors, giving the surveyors what they want, something to work, uh, just another tool in the toolbox. Um, let's pass it up to Jay Haskamp up to Minnesota, and he's gonna go over Trimble Access 2020 on Android and show you some, some of the few features. All right, thank you, Adam and Mel. Um, my name is Jay, I'm over here in Minnesota. Um, we too have had a lot of requests from customers um, asking us about 
getting access on a device that's in a smaller form factor, um, something that they can you know, put in their pocket, put in their survey vest, and then uh, work out into the woods. We have a lot of guys working out in some pretty thick, uh, thick wooded areas up here, and uh, having just that little bit smaller form factor would be a lot, a lot of help to them. So um, I'm personally really excited about this TDC 600 with uh, Access 2020 on the Android platform. Um, I've used it several times now, and it's uh, it's the real deal, I would say. Um, it's the same look, feel, performance that you would have with access on any other device. It's not slowed down. It's not choppy. The buttons and the menus and everything are all in the same place, so it's really just zero learning curve um, if, you, if you've run access in the past. So, got my TDC 600. I'm going to open Trimble Access 2020 um, here on my device. It takes just a second to open. And then when it's open, you're going to notice right about now, it looks just like you would typically see with the regular access. So I have a test project created on here. Um, I'm just going to kind of show you how to create a new project because there's a cool new feature here that I want to cover. So I'm going to hit new project. I'm going to give it a name. We're just going to call it um, TEST space five. Doesn't matter. And I'm going to hit enter and create. And now I have my project created. Notice next to where I enter in my job name, okay? See that little folder icon? That's something new in 2020. So one of the things that have been, we've been asked for quite a bit by customers was the ability to add subfolders in our projects and in our jobs. Have no fear, Access 2020 has you covered. Also the cool thing about this is when you update to the latest version of Trimble Sync Manager and you wanna do that uh, transfer back and forth to TBC or to the office, via the web using Sync Manager. That also supports the subfolder um, file structure as well. So that's a huge, huge improvement for us for Access 2020. So to show how that works, I'm gonna create a new folder. It says create a folder and give it a name. We will call it folder space two, hit create. And now you can see at the top, project test five, subfolder, folder two, and then I'm going to give a job name of, uh, we'll just get creative today, it's say example, and hit enter. Uh, I'm going to change my units really quick here to US feet just to kind of give you an opportunity to see um, again that everything looks the same as what we're used to. Okay, and then now I'm going to set my coordinate system. So again, I'm going to pick from a library, and then I'm going to choose my um, coordinate system. What's really cool with this is when we're working with the TDC 600, since it's in portrait mode, we get these nice big long lists of, you know, like here are the coordinate systems as an example, and it's really easy to just scroll with your finger. Um, this just makes things a little bit easier to find versus a little scroll bar in a TSC 7 or a tablet, you know, something that's in landscape mode. But I'll show you a trick in a second. All right, so we're going to choose. Uh, United States, counties, Minnesota. I am here today. I can find it here. Stearns County. We're going to use a geoid model, with, and then we're going to give ourselves a project height. I believe we're at about 1100 here. Hit store. And one more setting that we need to change here in Minnesota. And we are rolling. Okay. So, as you can see, I'm in my access map screen something that we are familiar with. What's cool about this is if I rotate it to the side, it switches to landscape mode. So that's one cool option. We have portrait mode and we have landscape mode. And I'll show you how that affects us in a minute here. First thing I need to do is I need to Bluetooth my R10. So since we're kind of using going in the woods for our theme here on my side of things in Minnesota, I got my R10 Model 2 with ProPoint enabled. I'm gonna hike right back in those woods and I'm gonna collect data all day long and feel good about it and not have to stand around and wait for you know, terrible residuals to come down. This thing is gonna just make my day a lot easier. So what I need to do to Bluetooth this in, I'm gonna tap my little icon on the top. I'm gonna hit the little Bluetooth icon on the bottom, and then I'm gonna hit search on the bottom. And here it's kind of our discovered and paired devices. Some of you have been in the game for a while, are used to Android devices, or maybe even some of the old Windows CE or Windows mobile devices. This screen might look pretty familiar. Okay, so we see our R10 Model 2. We're gonna hit pair. It's gonna to try to establish a connection with the device for us. We're 
we're going to go ahead and hit pair. It's checking. And now it's found the R10 too. And the nice thing about it, it says a new device has been paired. What do you want to do with it? It defaults right to connect to rover, but we can pick anything from the list. We're going to hit connect to rover to accept. There it shows up on our list. We hit accept. Accept one more time. And in a minute here, we should see it kick in. There we go, connecting to receiver. And now we're connected to our R10 Model 2. And it looks like we have 20 satellites. So now let's go ahead and get started on surveying. So I'm going to hit my menu button and go to measure. VRS, measure points. We're going to dial into the Minnesota VRS network. And we are just about rolling here, starting survey. Waiting for information from the base. And there we go. Wants us to calibrate tilt sensors. I'm just going to skip that for now. Uh, this is a new receiver, so I haven't done it yet. Notice one thing. I'm going to turn off my thing, my uh, e bubble here and my tilt warnings. Okay, so notice one thing. We're on the measure point screen. Notice we don't have the map, okay? We're just in the measures, the form here to measure points. A lot of people like that split screen feel. Now, if you think of the split screen, you kind of need the real estate width wise in order to be able to run that split screen. So one thing you can do is the split screen is a necessity is to turn it into landscape mode. When we turn it into landscape mode, then we have our map on the left and our measure form on the right. If we're in portrait mode, a new little feature here on the TDC 600 is down on the bottom there's this little blue uh, circle here with double arrows. I can grab that and drag it up and notice when I drag it up, it drags my map screen up. So I can set however big or high I want that to be all the way up to the bottom of the code box and then I can have a split screen in portrait mode as well and if I want to hide it I just bring it down. That's a pretty cool new little feature that we have there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back out of here and go to just our typical uh, map screen and show you a couple more things. Um, we have the map screen open. This looks pretty familiar to everybody else. One thing you should notice is if you hit the little three dots on the map screen, you get this menu here. Now we all have seen the CAD toolbar in the past. A new feature for Access 2020 is the Snap to toolbar. So this is a bunch of various snap tools when we have different lines and, and CAD objects in here like uh, midpoint of a line, end of line, intersection, um, uh, center of circle, things like that. So um, that's one thing that's been asked for is to not have to compute all this stuff to be able to just use simple snaps in our map screen to grab objects and stake them out or add points to them. So uh, that new feature just makes working with your DXF files and your background maps that much more powerful for you as an Access 2020 user. So TDC 600, very powerful for GPS. Um, the roads module comes across and works on here as well. Um, if you need to work with a robot, you can do it via Bluetooth or you can use the external uh, TDL 2.4 radio. But for those guys who just want to go out there and beat the streets with, with GPS, especially Minnesota VRS users, this is a sweet little tool, all right? So thanks for joining me today. I'm going to take this R10 Model 2 in the woods, collect some data. Um, be sure to check off and back to our blog or LinkedIn page or subscribe to our YouTube page. As we uh, get more uh, bodies using the software, we'll be putting out a lot more Tech Talk videos and some kind of product videos on Access 2020 and highlighting some of the cool new things, all right? So we'll see you then.